Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear fourth year students, I hope you are all fine and I welcome you to the um, second lecture of maternal and child health. And this lecture will encompass uh, the uh, intranatal uh, part and the uh, and we will talk about the essential newborn care uh, of the child that is just born and it has uh, entered the new world and it has the um, challenge of adapting to the new world and now uh, we will uh, being public health as, uh, ex uh, experts will make the new environment friendly for the newborn by taking uh, care of few things that we will be discussing in these uh, uh, coming minutes now uh, what is um, the neonatal period neonatal period is defined as the period from birth till the completion of fourth week of life it has been divided into two parts the first part is uh, early neonatal period that is the first week or the first seven days of life and then we have the late neonatal period that uh, starts from the beginning of second week and it uh, ends till fourth week that makes around 21 days now uh, what is uh, the uh, focus uh, or objective of essential newborn care the focus or uh, the uh, objective of the newborn care is to assist newborn in adaptation to the extra uterine uh, environment the, uh, <clears throat> and extra uterine environment uh, means that uh, the baby has been born it is no more in the womb of, her, of um, his or her mother and it has to adapt to the new world now this involves following first is the cardiorespiratory function that is initiation of respiration and oxygenation of blood then we have body temperature maintenance then we have to establish the feeding which is very important and then we have to prevent infection and we have to early detect and manage congenital disorders or other disorders or infections okay so these are the few things which will uh, we will pay attention to and uh, if we uh, focus on these points we will be helping the new uh, newborn to adapt to the world and it comprises of immediate care that is provided right after birth uh, that includes neonatal examinations um, in the first uh, uh, hours and then uh, subsequently uh, in the coming uh, times and then we have to uh, by these examinations identify high risk uh, infants <clears throat> now what is the immediate care that we will provide at birth that will be cleaning the airways then we will go for an APGAR score recording and then we will take care of the cord and the care of eyes and the care of skin and the body temperature maintenance and breastfeeding initiation and establishment. Now in the coming slides we will discuss one by one how will we go about this. Now uh, first thing is that uh, before the child is born we will have to prepare uh, for the birth because we will be receiving a baby we will be receiving a neonate and we will make sure that certain things are available for the baby to adapt easily to the environment. Make sure that following materials and conditions are available for the newborn. First is to clean and warm two clean warm towels for thermal protection of the baby. One for drying and wrapping the baby initially, the other for covering the newborn to prevent heat loss. A drought free delivery room with a temperature of at least 25 degrees centigrade, soap, water, clean gloves, cotton, gauze, and a, a clean, clear labor table for delivery to ensure six C's or six cleans. Now, clean hands, clean surface, and clean cutting of cord, then clean cord tie, clean cord stump and clean perineum now initially we used to have first three c's so if somebody asks you in the examination what are the three c's you will ensure during delivery 
तो यू कैन से क्लीन हैंड्स क्लीन सर्फेस एंड क्लीन कॉर्ड बट नाउ वी हैव इनहैंस दैम टू सिक्स सीज विच आर क्लीन कॉर्ड टाई क्लीन कॉर्ड स्टम्प एंड क्लीन प्रीनियम एंड देन वी हैव अ क्लीन डिलीवरी किट फॉर कॉर्ड केयर अ सक्शन डिवाइस दैट वॉज जस्ट शोन अ ब्लैंकेट एंड अ क्लॉक टू नोट द टाइम ऑफ डिलीवरी now with these things we will proceed with the delivery and we should ensure that these things are available always keep an additional set of the equipment in reserve for multiple births twins or in case of the failure of the first set theek okay? hai uh, now uh, government of pakistan has initially uh, tried to provide uh, a clean delivery kit clean delivery kit um, uh, was uh, destined to be given to the mothers who are planning uh, domiciliary care uh, to provide domiciliary care to the uh, women who intend to deliver at home and the clean uh, that uh, clean delivery kit contained um, a cloth uh, that was made up of plastic fabric so that it rather is what it was a plastic sheet and not a cloth and then it contained a scissor that was clean a thread for tying the cord uh, and it had a bottle of dentin blue for um, uh, doing a sepsis of the cord and then it contained few gauze pieces and then it had a bar of soap in it so that um, uh, uh, washing of the hands could be ensured of the one who is assisting the uh, labor or, or, or the midwife or the trained birth attendant now uh, cleaning the airway establishment and maintenance of the breathing is the most important Uh, the step immediately after birth everything else is secondary so first and foremost thing is we have to clean airway and we have to establish breathing <clears throat> the airway should be cleared of mucus and other secretions positioning the body with head low uh, may be uh, uh, may help in drainage of the secretions gentle suction to remove mucus and amniotic fluid also helps and uh, one more thing when the baby is delivered vaginally uh the pressures from the vaginal wall and the birth canal itself ensures that most of the secretions are already drained um uh, but for those which are born through c section we need to uh, properly suck the secretions out if natural breathing fails to establish within a minute uh, of birth resuscitation is necessary suction and assisted respiration application of oxygen mask and intubation now uh, we will also ensure that all labor wards should be equipped with resuscitation equipment if there is no um, uh, gasping or breathing at all after uh, 20 minutes of effective ventilation and the cardiac massage if required stop ventilation so this is uh, about Uh, clearing the airway to establish breathing now then the uh, second important aspect is care of the cord in a normal neonate cut and tie the cord when it stops pulsating after the birth you will see the cord pulsating so when um, uh, it stops pulsating you can uh, tie the cord and cut it the advantage is that baby derives about 10 ml of the extra blood if the cord is cut after uh, pulsation ceases using properly sterilized instruments and cord ties do not apply anything on the stump and keep the cord uh, clean and dry inspect the cord for bleeding 2 hours after ligation inspect the discharge and infection till healing occurs now this is very important we have to take good care of the cord because cord is a potential site which can lead to um uh omphalitis which is a life threatening condition that can endanger uh, newborn's life so we will advise the mother to keep the cord dry and clean through uh, the use of spirit alcohol or gentian violet it will pre prevent infection and it will um, uh, help 
cord dry soon uh, plus uh, as far as bathing in cons- is concerned you you can advise the mother that do not um, uh, bathe the baby till uh, the cord is dry and it falls off during this period if you find it necessary you should go for a towel bath now uh, and you should also tell the mother about the uh, red flag signs about the cord that is if it starts oozing pus uh, that will be um, pussy and uh, foul smelling and if you find redness around uh, umbilicus that is spreading you should immediately contact the healthcare provider and cord should be kept as dry as possible it dries and shrivels up and separates by aseptic necrosis in 5 to 10 days for new mothers you have to um, tell them properly see all right now then we have ma- maintaining the body temperature it is one very important aspect the normal body temperature of the newborn is between 36.5 to 37.5 degrees centigrade hypothermia is a body temperature of less than 36 degrees centigrade a newborn baby is projected out of the warm womb of the mother into an environment which may take which may be 10 to 20 uh, degrees centigrade or even lower a newborn has little thermal control and can lose body heat very quickly immediately after birth most of the heat loss occurs through evaporation of amniotic fluid from the body of the wet child now as much as 75% of the heat loss can occur from the head hypothermia results in uh increased oxygen consumption hence hypoxemia and increased glucose consumption hence hypoglycemia and metabolic acidosis now hypoxemia and hypoglycemia can result in death of the newborn among survivors uh, it can lead to the permanent impairment of brain resulting in the developmental handicaps so it is very important that you take good care of child's body temperature neonate body temperature and how can you do it Uh, the easiest way is that you take the baby to the mother's uh, body because skin to skin contact um, uh, can help baby maintain its temperature uh, receive the baby in a dry warm uh, that uh, thing which i initially told you is known as kangaroo care when uh, the mother and the baby are in skin to skin contact now dry the dry the baby well discard the towel immediately and wrap and cover the baby except for the face and upper chest in a fresh warm clean and dry towel now the baby should be kept wrapped during the assessment and suction ventilation applied if required now place uh, the baby near a source of warmth a normal baby who is crying well after birth can be placed in skin to skin contact with mother's abdomen and covered with a dry cloth additional heat can be provided by placing the baby under the source of heat um now when the body's uh, uh, when the environmental temperature is close to 37 degree centigrade you don't need to uh, worry about that but in case when the weather is colder you need to arrange um uh, uh, some warming source practices such as separating the body from the mother for the first 12 to 24 hours of life are harmful preterm and low birth babies lose heat more easily through their skin as they have less subcutaneous fat for insulation ensure that during and after delivery no fans are running in the delivery room and no windows are open through which air currents blow into the room because they tend to uh, cool the bo- uh, baby early now care of the skin clean the blood mucus and meconium on the uh, newborn's uh, uh, body before presenting it to mother bathing the newborn after the birth is uh, uh, bathing the newborn soon after the birth is not recommended as it causes 
a drop in body temperature discourage the mother from giving birth to baby during the first day after the birth the mother or the attendant can clean the baby by wiping with a soft moist cloth and when the baby is given bath bathing should be done quickly in a warm room uh, using warm water low birth infants should not be given a bath now blood meconium and uh, low birth weight infant should not be given the bath blood meconium and some of the vermix will have to be wiped off during drying uh, at birth the remaining vermix does not need to be removed as it is harmless if cultural tradition demands bathing uh, it should be ensured that before uh, child uh, before 6 hours after birth and preferably on the second or third day of life as long as the baby is healthy and its temperature is normal all right now we will proceed further with now then we have to take care of the eyes the eyes should be cleaned at birth and uh, once every day using sterile cotton swab soaked in sterile water or normal saline from inner to outer side each eye should be cleaned using a separate swab uh, the routine use of local antiseptic drops for prophylaxis is not recommended The earlier practice of instilling a drop of freshly prepared silver nitrate solution to prevent gonococcal conjunctivitis is no longer uh, recommended. And then we come towards very important aspect that is breastfeeding initiation and its establishment. Um, we initially used to say that we should go for exclusive breastfeeding and we should not give any prelactials. What are prelactials? Prelactials are gutti. uh but because we have noticed that it usually takes some time to present baby uh, to the mother and then uh, uh, initiate breastfeeding uh, now the expert have started and then what happens that there is a risk of hypoglycemia that can have very detrimental effects on the health of a newborn so to prevent that uh, as a second better option we have started recommended the use of prelactials initially uh, we had um, uh, banned prelactials in the newborn cares and we had um, recommended the early initiation of uh, exclusive breastfeeding within half an hour of the delivery but usually the mother um, uh, is not that um, uh, you know oriented towards uh, doing breastfeeding at that time she is still in the uh, delivery suit the baby is taken by uh, other people who are drying it up uh, initiating its um, uh, breathing and uh, taking care of the cord and maintaining body temperature for in, in so in these rituals at times breastfeeding is delayed or neglected and by this time a newborn has a chance of developing hypoglycemia so uh we recommend initiating breastfeeding in the first um uh, half hour of the life but uh, if it is delayed from that half hour we recommend that be lactil should be given so that hypoglycemia may not occur now breastfeeding um, should be initiated within 1 hour of the birth if suckling is poor ensure correct position and attachment of the baby to the breast although there is little milk at this time it helps to establish uh, feeding and a close mother child relationship known as bonding the first milk is called colostrum and is the most suitable food for the baby during the early period because it contains a high concentration of immunoglobulins iga igg igm protein and other uh, nutrients uh, the body needs anti infective factors uh, that protect baby against respiratory infections and diarrheal diseases supplementary feeds are not necessary not even water the regular milk comes on the third to sixth day after birth the baby should be 
uh, allowed to breastfeed whenever it wants. Uh, this is called as feeding on demand. Feeding the baby on demand helps the baby to gain weight. It is important to advise mother to avoid feeding through bottles. Now, Apgar score. Apgar score is again very important um, aspect and it quickly helps in establishing baby's well-being taken at one minute and again uh, at five minutes. If Apgar score is omitted, it is considered as negligence. Apgar score is calculated by careful observation of the following parameters. The first is heart rate. Second is respiration. Third is muscle tone. Fourth is reflex response and Fifth is color of the infant. Now we will see one by one how you will record it. Activity of the muscle tone, pulse for heart rate, grimace for reflex response, appearance of skin color and uh, respiration for breathing. Now each sign is given a score of 0, 1, 2. It provides an immediate estimate of the physical condition of the baby that can help in further scoring of baby's healthing a perfect score is 9 or 10 and apgar score of 7 is considered uh, greater than 7 is considered satisfactory 4 to 6 in, uh, indicates moderately depressed and 0 to 3 indicates severely depressed a score below 5 needs prompt action that means in terms of resuscitation etc or calling of the pediatrician infant with low apgar scores at five minutes of age are subject to high risk of complications and death during neonatal period so you have to take care of such childs because apgar score will be the one which will help you identify high term uh, high risk now heart rate zero um, score will be given if it is absent and um, uh, one if it is less than 100 and uh, if it is more than 100 we will give just a minute there is some issue with the powerpoint All right, so uh, we will resume our lecture. Then uh, if the uh, heart rate is greater than if heart rate is if heart rate is greater than 100, we will um, we will give a score of 2. Now, if the respiratory effort is absent, we will uh, give a score of 0. If it is irregular gasping, we will give it 1. And if it is good crying, we will give it a score of 2. Now, if uh, the baby's uh, muscle tone is flaccid, it will be scored as 0. If it has partial flexion of extremities, we will uh, call it uh, score it as one and if it has complete flexion or active movements then we will uh, give it a score of two matlab agar wo achhi tarah apne haath baazu hila raha hai sukeed aaye aur khol raha hai to hum usko do denge isi tarah uh, for muscle reflex uh, for reflex response for no response we will give zero marks for grimax uh, grimace we will give two and for cry we will give uh, for grimace we will give one and for uh, cry we will give two for color if uh, blue central or cyanosis or pale we will give zero if body is pink but extremities are blue peripheral cyanosis then we will give one score 
and if um, it is completely pink we will give two scores now usually it happens that if the score uh, at one uh, at first minute is less uh, we usually uh, record it after five minutes as well uh, and usually scores improve by five minutes by initial um, by initial what you call uh, resuscitation if uh, the score was initially less so it is very important that you take this score twice first at one minute time and then at um, uh, five minutes time Okay, now uh, we'll go for the first examination of the child and when it will uh, occur, it will be made soon after birth, preferably in the delivery room. This examination is to ascertain the baby has not suffered injuries during birth process to detect malformations, especially those requiring urgent treatment and to check for danger signs. Now, what are its component birth weight it should preferably be taken within first hour of life. Uh, the naked body should be placed on a clean towel uh, on the scale pan. Scale pan is shown uh, in the slide. Home deliveries. Baby uh, place uh, the baby in the sling for a uh, sling bag for using a salter wing scale. The child is weighed to the nearest of 100 grams. Length with measuring board in frontometer as shown in the diagram. Uh, as shown in the pic, fixed he headpiece, infant lies supine, legs fully extended, feet flexed at right angle uh, to the lower leg. Two people are needed to take uh, to hold the baby correctly. The sliding board is moved firmly against the uh, feet before reading is taken. Now uh, the length is taken nearest to the 0.1 centimeter. Now head circumference use a, a tape measured at the maximum circumference of the head in occipital frontal diameter. The purpose is to ascertain uh, baby size against known standards for the population to compare the size with estimated period of gestation to provide a baseline against which subsequent progress can be measured. The measurement may change slightly during the first three days owing to the molding during labor. Now the following abnormalities found on examination should be immediately attended to. And what are these abnormalities? Cyanosis of lips and skin, any difficulty in breathing, imperforate anus, persistent vomiting, signs of cerebral irritation that is convulsions, neck rigidity, bulging of interior fontanelle and temperature instability. Now second examination. Uh, should preferably be done by a pediatrician within 24 hours after birth. The examination should form the first stage of continual process of healthcare surveillance that will continue through the neonatal and infant period. It is a detailed systematic examination from head to foot conducted in good light. The following protocol will be found useful for such an examination that is body size, body weight, crown, heel length, head and thoracic uh, perimeters, body temperature, skin, cyanosis of lips and skins, jaundice, pallor, generalized erythema, vascular or bulbous lesions, cardiac murmurs, absence of femoral pulse, central cyanosis, Respiratory rate greater than 60, thoracic cage retraction on inspiration, neurobehavioral activity. What was that neurobehavioral activity? Just a minute, let me go to the previous slide. That is posture, neck rigidity.
पॉस्चर नेक्रोट्रेशन एंड फ्रॉग लाइक पॉस्चर ठीक है दिस इज समथिंग हाइपर एक्सटेंशन ऑफ ऑल लिम्स हाइपर फ्लेक्शन ऑफ ऑल लिम्स ए सिमिस्ट्रिक पॉस्चर मसल टोन में टेंडन रिफ्लेक्सेस क्राई मूवमेंट हेड एंड फेस में हेड्रोकेफिलस लार्ज फॉन्टेनल्स प्रोमिनेंट स्कैल्फेंस कैटरेक्ट क्लोबोमा कंजक्टिवाइटिस ईयर्स में डिसमोफिजम एक्सेसरी ऑरिकल्स पेरियोरिकुलर पेट्स हेयर लिप एंड क्लेफ्ट पैलेट साइज ऑफ डिस्टेंशन एबनॉर्मल मैसेज इम्परफ्रेट एनस डिफॉर्मिटी सी जी एट एंड एक्स्ट्रा डिजिट्स स्पाइन में एंटी डिफेक्ट्स न्यूरो ट्यूबल एक्स्ट्रा जेनिटेलिया मेल हाइपोस्पेडियास एंडिसजनेटेस्टिस हाइड्रोसील एक्सेट्रा एंड फॉर फीमेल Fused labia in large clitoris. These are the signs you will look for. Conditions that you will look for. Now coming towards late neonatal period. <clears throat> Hazards during neonatal uh, neonatal period are infections that is diarrhea and pneumonia, failure of uh, satisfactory uh, nutrition. Risk identification in newborns include these newborns would need special care and should be referred to the <clears throat> um. पीडियाट्रिक यूनिट नाउ एसफिक्सिया नीड्स रिफरल टू द पीडियाट्रिक यूनिट विच इज इक्विप टू मैनेज पोस्ट एसफिक्सियल प्रॉब्लम सच एज कन्वर्जेंस हाइपोक्सिया हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया हाइपोकेल्सीमिया शॉक एंड रीनल फेलियर डेंजर साइंस आर कन्वर्जेंस फास्ट ब्रीदिंग सवेर चेस्ट एंड ड्राॅइंग नेजल फ्लेयरिंग ग्रंटिंग बल्जिंग फॉन्टेनल टेन और मोर स्किन पस्यूल्स or a big boil if axillary if axillary temperature um 37.5 or above or feels hot to touch or less temperature than 35 degree centigrade feels cold to touch in all these conditions Uh, we should refer the baby to a pediatrician or a unit that deals with infants and neonates other signs are lethargic or unconscious less than normal movements severe jaundice blood in the stools not able to feed no attachment at all no suckling uh, not suckling at all major malformations Like meningomyelocele, hydrocephalus, large omphaloceles are easily identified on inspection of the body. Diaphragmatic hernia may be suspected in a child with respiratory distress and a scaphoid abdomen. Babies with excessive salivation and mucus discharge from the oral cavity may have esophageal atresia. there is an inability to pass rubber catheter into uh, the stomach in case of esophageal uh, atresia most of the babies require immediate surgery for them to survive and therefore should be referred to a pediatric unit the detailed information regarding sick newborn is not being mentioned um hence uh, here since it will be taken care of by imnci and newborn uh, care lectures when we will be discussing integrated management of newborn child and uh, ch child uh, then we will be discussing uh, the sick newborn uh, how to deal with it in detail Okay with this um 
with this we uh, cover our uh, we have uh, discussed the neonatal period uh, that was a part of second lecture of maternal and child health uh, we will also briefly discuss how to take care of the mother during that uh, during that um, uh, period in our next lecture and after that we will start uh, child care uh, which will include growth monitoring and immunization and other aspects one by one. Thank you.